What's up, everybody? We back with another message, another video. Thank you to all my new subscribers and future new subscribers. You know we do nothing here without God because everything is spiritually led by God over here. We cover the world from a spiritual and physical aspect to get the raw, real, and uncut answers. So anything you hear, anything you see in these end times, may you test the spirits, a.k.a. take the words and visuals back to prayer with God, as there are many Decepticons running around in these end times sent from the enemy, had a strong, close, and personal relationship with God. Good, great, and awesome. All right, everybody, March 21st, word 2024 on a good old Thursday. So let's just keep this very simple and easy to understand here. This word is about the rapture and how the enemy convinces people that there isn't one. So he attacks their faith. So let's get started, okay? The enemy's very witty and he knows that we cannot please God without faith. So if he can dwindle our faith, he feels he can be successful in keeping us from things that the Lord has in store for us, okay? Now, one way the enemy attacks that faith that there's even a rapture because it's we're gonna go over scripture too to give y'all the parallels and the hints even so here's the deal there's people that are operating under religious spirits who like the pharisees don't see the signs and wonders god does in front of their faces they can't even see it you know they'll use a scripture but then have their own understanding and even reject what they're seeing in front of their faces. Like the Pharisees even rejected what Jesus did right in front of their faces and gave credit to Satan. <laughs> they didn't even want to acknowledge that Jesus did what he did. So it's people like that. But with that being said, those type of individuals teach the church that God doesn't talk to his children anymore. And there is no rapture. Like it's a lot of bad things going on with that. And that teaches people wrongly. You know, and so on the other side, there are people who get beat up by the enemy every day and is ready for a rapture to happen. They don't even want to walk their calling. They're so over it. So what people need to understand with that whole thing is. That's where flesh kicks in. And when flesh kicks in, you can have dreams. The enemy can attack you on fleshly emotions and thoughts. You can be so obsessed with the idea of the rapture that it hurts you. And so that's why we shouldn't be obsessed with it, but acknowledge, OK, that's going to be a thing. Make sure we stay ready. And so when these dates that people are given, quote unquote, in dreams don't happen, it can dwindle their faith that there's even a rapture in the first place. And that's the enemy's goal. OK, let's go over scripture, because I know a lot of people I ain't even about to debate with people about this, but. The Lord was so serious about me talking about stuff like this. And it's even shown me all the end time events. I've seen it in visions and dreams. It's he's explained to me what's going on. And so we're going to do a video on that one at some point. But we're going to read scripture. People don't actually look at these groupings of scripture and talk about and pay attention to this stuff. Another thing, too, that proves and shows that the enemy's trying to do exactly what is being described here is how Lil Uzi Vert had a concert and was trying to convince people that they missed the rapture. Basically a spirit working through him because you know the secular music artists, how they get down and work for Satan. Basically saying, so sorry, you listen to this song every other day, every day. You're going to hear it over and over and over again. You stuck. It's over. What that sound like? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is right there. Why would a secular music artist sit there before his concert and say that to people about the rapture? What should that tell you? That should ring a bell or something. Hold on, let me explain something to them real quick. Before everybody starts screaming and saying, oh, like I told y'all earlier, you motherfuckers that entered the rapture. And if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now, obviously all y'all motherfuckers going to hell. Right with me. So... Let's get it. Oh, you already here. I'm so sorry. You can't get out. You're stuck. It's over. You heard the song a million times and you didn't even know. That's up. Revelation 4 1. After these things, I looked and behold, this is John, by the way, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. 
Now, one thought that came to me, the Lord gave me was John got called up to see the side of heaven and what was going on on earth. Really, the Lord could have just let him see what happened on earth, but it parallels 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And you know, the whole idea with the trumpet and all that extra detail that the Lord gives us it parallels Revelation 4.1. And before that, y'all got to understand, we're going to read Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Okay. Yes, these were letters to churches, the faithful church, the lukewarm church, and the dead church. It's similar to where we are today. You know, history repeats itself. So God is telling people to repent. So with Revelation 3.10, what the Lord was breaking down for me was, you know, that whole scripture he broke down. History repeat itself. He says, because you have kept my command to persevere. And right now, y'all, we are all going through some crazy stuff. It's not something most people think we got to wait to go through some stuff. It might worsen, but we are going through it as the body of Christ. We're not waiting for no tests and trials, we're going through them and they're going to increase, you know, as we do what we do, you know, and a lot of people have this idea that people are running from their callings. But, you know, for me personally, I'm walking it, actually deeply walking my calling, having to get correction, do all these other things that I don't talk about. So a lot of people, it's already happening and people being jailed and all this stuff is crazy. Street preachers. So continuing on, when we persevere through all these things and what's to come, we stay faithful as the faithful church, right? I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world. We are not the world. We are not of this world. We are the church. God doesn't call us the world to test those who dwell on the earth. You know, in order for you to miss a whole hour of trial, that's a time period of trial. You can't be here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of them things where people just don't want. They just don't. They don't want to receive that part. History repeats itself. God is making that connection for what is coming in Revelation. As John is being shown. So it's no coincidence that all this stuff is going on with Revelation 3.10 and the churches getting these words of correction and so forth. It's no, you know, all the stuff going on with the persecution of the church and all that right before Revelation 4.1 where John gets caught up to show what happens afterwards. That's, it's a parallel. Hebrews 11.5 is what a lot of people miss. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. His faith pleased the Lord. Enoch was so close to the Lord. So, yes, not everybody's going to actually die. You get what I'm saying? People will see the rapture and coming and get taken. And a lot of people have had dreams about this, including myself, plenty actually. I'll never forget some of them where the Lord, the first thing he told me to do regarding the rapture, I remember I was sitting there doing it for three hours. And then when I was done, I had a dream being in that same spot in my car at night and there was a rainbow in the sky. And the Lord said so loudly, tell them what I shown you and told you. So it's just a lot of indicators. And now I see why it's so important, because without faith, you really can't be taken. If you are saying out your mouth, there is not one, you ain't going nowhere. You're not going anywhere. And it gets to a point where people are. It, the Lord can give them a dream about something and they probably still won't receive it. It's just a lot of stuff going on. But the enemy knows that he can attack people's faith to keep them from going get them to come into agreement with what they're saying. 
So you can't ignore that Enoch was literally just taken. So there's it's nothing new under the sun. Basically, the Lord can do that again. He was so pleased with Enoch, he just, all right, Enoch, come on. It's time to go. That's how close they were. You know, that's another indicator that the Lord would just randomly take somebody. He's done it before with Enoch. It may not have been called the rapture, <laughs> but he translated Enoch and he was not found. He was gone. Nothing new under the sun. God can do the same thing with the mass grouping of people just so they can avoid a time period like Revelation 3.10 says. OK, so I just find it to be interesting how the Lord had me put this together. Peace and blessings. And I will catch y'all in the next one.